who is wise and understanding among us. Those who seek God's wisdom, those who delight and meditate on God's law. Come, learn more about the wisdom from above, a wisdom that yields a harvest of righteousness. O oh God, your wisdom is more precious than jewels. We gather in this place so we may draw near to you. Welcome, everyone. Welcome to St. John United Church of Christ, where no matter who you are or where you are on life's journey, you are welcome here. Thank you once again to the children of our church for participating in our new tradition of bringing items and symbols of worship forth into work forth into our sanctuary and onto the sacred table or altar of god they have brought the light of christ the word of god service fruits of the spirit the bread of life that feeds us all the cross the cup of blessing and of course the streamers represent the holy spirit which always surrounds us in worship. So they will be doing that every Sunday, moms and dads, parents, um, let them know that they're always welcome to participate. We have extra items, so every child has a part. Friends, if you will, join me in our gathering prayer. We draw near to you, O oh God, source of all understanding, and ask you to draw near to us. Teach us your wisdom from above that we may bear good fruit in our lives. Root us beside the streams of your wisdom that the green leaves of our goodness fed by your insight may not wither. Amen. Thank you, everyone. And Miss Dana, will you come up and lend me a hand. We've got uh, 
Sunday school milestones to recognize. And let's see, first, we are going to do a blessing of the Sunday school teachers and the crib room volunteers. So if you are one of those folks, if you are a crib room volunteer or a Sunday school teacher, would you stand so you can be acknowledged right where you are? And you're included in that, Miss Dana. <laughs> yes. So let us say a quick word of blessing. Gracious, holy, amazing God, thank you so much for the willingness of these folks to offer their service to the children of our community. God, we ask that you fill them with patience, with love, with care and understanding and bless their lives as they have been so willing to offer their time to our children. In God's name we pray, amen. Right. Our next group is the three-year-olds and the four-year-olds who are starting church school. And we didn't get to bless our four-year-olds last year because we weren't gathering in person and it's, um, it was a little bit difficult, but now that we are beginning to be back in the building and resuming some of our things that are more like normal, um, do they come up or do we just ask them to stay? Okay, we ask you guys to come up, the three-year-olds and the four-year-olds with their parents. Can you guys come up and join us? Yeah. And they've never done that before. Yeah, if you are a three-year-old or a four-year-old, come on up, guys. I know some of these guys. Hi, hello. Good morning, everyone. Hey, come on. I know this guy. This is the Bible holder. He was so good. You were so tall doing that Bible color. That was so awesome. Come on up. Yeah. So that's fine. That's fine. We're going to say a quick prayer with you guys. Yeah, we are going to say a prayer for you guys because we are so excited that you're here, that you're in church school, and we want church school, not just this first year, but every year of your lives to be fun to teach you guys something about God, but always to teach you that this church, and look at all those grownups out there. Look at all those grownups. They love you. They're not your family family, but they're your church family. And they always will look out for you. Right, congregation? Amen. All right, so let's say a quick prayer. Loving, gracious God, bless these children and their families. God, help them know from this age to their oldest age, their last breath, that the church is a place of learning, a place of fun and experiencing and finding you, a place to bring all of their questions, a place to ask and bother adults and giggle and have fun, a place that will always be where they can find you and where they can find church family. We ask these blessings in your name. Amen. All right, guys, thank you so much. You can go back and sit down for a little bit longer with your families. And now we have our fourth graders who are getting Bibles this year. Do you want me to just... Okay. Yep. Uh, Kayla Bonnemeyer. <laughs> Come on up, Kayla. And Colin Huber. Okay. There you go. And just stand right here. So we'll get all of you up here. Some of these fourth graders are rapidly on their way taller to being taller than me and Miss Dana. And the, Nicholas yep, Nicholas Klostermeyer and Layla Owen. Addison Stoopy, Addie's here, Layla, here you go, Nicholas. Here you go, Addie. Are there any other 
Are there any other fourth graders who are here? All right, come on up here, come closer. Let Miss Dana get a picture. I'm gonna cheat and stand on the first step so I look older and taller than all you guys. Older's not a problem, taller is. All right, you can go. And may that book always be a place that you seek wisdom. And now, if we have our confirmands here, if you are a confirmand or a prayer partner, would you all stand? And we've had such a busy fall. <laughs> oh, I was like, I know we have more than one. Um, there we go. Uh, we have um, a great group. We have, um, let's see, my two sons, Mark and Aaron Glover. We have Sarah McChristian, who's here. We have Taylor Zegedy. We have, um, I'm going down. We have Gus. Byers, uh, who is part of a new family that has joined the church. Um, Mark, Aaron, Gus, Sarah, Taylor. We, nope, nope. Um, there, oh, uh, we have um, Kinley Madura, who um, is actually going to a different church to do her work because she's busy on Wednesday nights. So um, we've been creating a model of partnership um, and so we're going to be doing stuff with this other church uh, so that we get to know the kids Kinley knows and then those kids get to know our the kids Kinley knows so we're um, kind of sharing that responsibility and we're working on um, uh, prayer partners, um, but we really ask all of you to be prayer partners for these guys, um, but let's just say a word of prayer for our confirmands their families and their prayer partners. Gracious God, uh, these are older young people entering into a milestone of their faith journeys. God, we ask you to bless them, their families, those who pray for them, their prayer partners, as they go on this journey of faith, of asking questions, of learning. And once again, God, we hope that you will teach all of us that this is a journey that never ends that will enrich our lives, whether we are three or four years old or 103 or four years old. Gracious God, be with all of us as we learn together. We give, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Any more kids to recognize? All right, so Miss Dana is escorting all of the kids to church school. So if you are a child in church school, um, Miss Dana is going to meet you guys right over there and uh, walk you out. And I think you have a special guest in your church school today. Um, I know the kids during VBS met Moses. Today they're going to meet Noah and Mrs. Noah, Noah's wife. <clears throat> Proverbs 31 10 25 through 31 a capable wife who can find she is far more precious than jewels strength and dignity are her clothing and she laughs at the time to come she opens her mouth with wisdom and the teaching of kindness is on her tongue she looks well to the ways of her household and does not eat the bread of idleness. Her children rise up and call her happy, her husband too, and she praises her. Many women have done excellently, but you surpass them all. Charm is delightful and beauty is vain, but a woman who fears the Lord is to be praised. Give her a share in the fruit of her hands and let her works praise her in the city gates. So our second scripture comes from the epistle 
of James chapter three and ex, uh, three and four, it's excerpted from, from there. Again, um, reiterating the idea of wisdom. So Proverbs 31, a lot of you may have heard, it's often a, um, a passage that we read um, to remember women of great influence and accomplishment and wisdom among us. Uh, we read it sometimes at memorials, uh, it's a fitting one, um, but in it, and it sounds like we are sort of applauding a woman who's an obedient wife, but it's not actually. Um, Proverbs is full of passages about wise women, even to the point of personifying wisdom. And if you are um, in, in uh, any grade that uh, eighth grade probably or sixth grade and above that talks about personification, uh, making a concept into a person, uh, the book of Proverbs does that with the concept of women and she is Sophia or Hokma in um, Hebrew. She is um, independent. She is strong. She invites foolish people to come feast at her table, drink of her wine and eat of her bread. And so the uh, the strong, um, independent wisdom is manifested in this woman that we read about in 31, and those pieces of Proverbs are chapters 8 and 9. Um, then we move over to the New Testament epistles, and we read from James, still, again, discussing and discerning what it means to be wise. Who is wise and understanding among you? Show by your good life that your works are done with gentleness, born of wisdom. But if you have any bitter envy and selfish ambition in your hearts, do not be boastful and false to the truth. The wisdom from above is first pure, then peaceable, gentle, willing to yield, full of mercy and good fruits without a trace of partiality or hypocrisy, and a harvest of righteousness is, is sown in peace for those who make peace. Draw near to God, and he will draw near to you. Friends, this is the word of God for us, the people of God. Thanks be to God.
Would you join me in a word of prayer? Holy and gracious God, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in your sight. O oh God, our strength and our salvation. Amen. You know, these passages about wisdom bring up so many memories and stories. And uh, I, I remember years ago, we had a children's program that was based on the book of Proverbs. Um, the kids learned to listen. They learned to think before they speak. They learned to be good friends and help others. Simple, straightforward lessons. I like that. You know, I, I also remember or think about how now that uh, Mark is 13, and this is a story that embarrasses me, not you, just so you know. Uh, now that Mark is 13, his dad and I try to impart wisdom to him, you know. <laughs> and, and so we try to tell him, uh, you know, how to be and how to act. And, you know, especially as they reach that 13 with dating and girls. And I've told Mark many times as a what not to do kind of story that when I was a kid, his age, um, I, of course, you know, it was, it was, I was a nerdy kid. And so it was very important to me to be and show that I was really smart. And so in my mind, if I just acted really smart around all the boys, clearly they would want to date me because what is the most valuable thing that 13 year olds want in a boyfriend or girlfriend? They want a really smart one, right? I mean, that it's just known, right? <laughs> you don't care about pretty, you don't care about anything else. You just want someone really smart. That's not true, Mark. You, and Mark knows that now. <laughs> you probably knew it when we started telling him that story, but you know, there's this guy in the Bible, right? Who's wise in the Bible? Who's wise in the Bible? Solomon, there we go. So Solomon is one of the people that the, these wisdom stories are kind of circulate around. And I remember, I remember being a kid and um, hearing for the first time that story about Solomon's wisdom, right? Solomon is so wise that when these two women come to him fighting over a child, he's so wise he knows how to settle the argument, right? He says he's going to cut the baby in half and give each woman half the baby. And lo and behold, the true mother of the child gives the child up because rather than have her child hurt, she will give him up to another woman to raise. And that's how wise Solomon was to know and settle the dispute. But I have to say, when I heard that story <laughs> as a young person, I didn't think that was very wise because who would threaten that, right? That just didn't make any sense to me. So the question that we talk about today is, what does it mean? to be wise. Now, Solomon's behaviors and words in the passage, you know, do give us a hint of that, but there are writings all over our Bible, if you didn't know, called wisdom literature. And they include some of the Psalms, the book of Proverbs, Ecclesiastes, you know, that little book in there, um, it's not just the song from the birds for everything there is a season. It's, it's actually, a, there's, a, there's a whole book around that verse. Um, and the writings point to this strain of thought that was very prevalent in ancient Hebrew times that also trickled into New Testament time, into the life of Jesus, and even um, in some of the epistles or letters of the Bible that we read today. Now, Solomon equates wisdom with asking God for a listening heart and an understanding mind. That's interesting. In those images, there's implied thoughtfulness, kindness, emotion, morality, and discernment. Wisdom, little that I know at 13, is quite different from knowledge, right? None of those things has anything to do with knowledge or intelligence. Wisdom is not the same as being smart. It's not even the same as experience. It goes deeper than any of those things. 
And it should be pointed out that Solomon does indeed have a good measure of wisdom in scripture. But again, I still want to unpack this idea of what it means to be wise. When I was a kid, old people and owls were wise, right? That's what I knew. But it's more than that, isn't it? What about today? Do we even think about wisdom in our modern culture? Is it a concept that we, that we engage in very often? Is it worth the pursuit of wisdom in our world when Siri on our iPhones or Google on our computers can give us answers to any of the questions that we have? Alexa, tell me this. Siri, tell me that, right? The knowledge of the entire world is in a sense at our fingertips in a way that it's never been before. And yet does all of that access to knowledge make us any better, any smarter? Not really, does it? In some ways with all of the facts at our fingertips, we are more lost than ever these days and just as far from wisdom. And often I doubt that many people in their day to day living would even put wisdom on their list of goals, right? Ask yourself about your daily life. Do you think about being wise? Do you like Solomon seek to live wisely? Do you wish to govern your own life with wisdom in the way that Solomon governed his people? Do you have, do you interact and praise God and interact with others with humility? Do you have an understanding of your own inadequacies? How might your life be different if you sought to live within a listening heart and an understanding mind. I, I think those characteristics are lost today. Would you deal with your children differently? Would your relationships with your spouse or your partner be different? Would your work be any different? And finally, there's this really important question. How do we begin to seek wisdom? If we wanted wisdom, where do we get it? How do we get it? How do you get wise? Proverbs tells us, and so do the Psalms, a very famous quote that you probably could quote even if you don't care about wisdom, right? The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Everyone is at least familiar with that saying. And so you think, fear, what does wisdom have to do with being afraid? I have to be afraid of God to be wise? And the answer is you don't. Being wise or having a fear of God in Old Testament and biblical terms, it means to have reverence, have awe. Awe. I'm in awe of God. And in order to be in awe of something, you have to seek it, to engage it, to look at it, to get a sense of how amazing, how large it is. That's the beginning of wisdom. The ancient Hebrew tradition of wisdom was deeply embedded in the culture, but it wasn't all that widespread. I mean, it makes sense that busy Hebrews were just like us in many ways, just as human and just as oblivious to living wisely. So the tradition that was, all, was always there, but it was as rare 3,000, 4,000 years ago as it is today, believe it or not. And we kind of think ancient people were holier than we are, but they weren't. Um, Wisdom tradition was never mainstream, was never conventional. And then there was this book a couple of centuries after Solomon called Ecclesiastes. There was a teacher whose name was Koheleth. And then there was this young man who came along a few centuries later called Jesus. And a lot of his teachings were rooted in an understanding of that tradition. And Jesus's approach was sometimes a little different than those Old Testament writings, but the core of wisdom ideas were definitely there. And one of the best examples of Jesus's wisdom were the Beatitudes. That's wisdom writing. Jesus looked at people and said, you'll be happy or you'll be blessed if you pursue righteousness. You'll be happy if you, and you will be blessed if you acknowledge 
that you have poverty of spirit, which means you need God in your soul. Through years of study and research, I think that what Jesus meant by those words is that the first step in our faith life, the first step in our pursuit of wisdom, the first step in our journey, as we continue to learn and talk about learning, you could say it's the pursuit of wisdom, but I would say it would be in, in Jesus' language to acknowledge our need for God. When we acknowledge our need for God, we are on the first step to a path of wisdom. When we realize that deep in our souls, there's this yearning, and we try to fill it sometimes with a lot of distracting things, but deep in us, there's this yearning to be in relation with the God who made us. For me, Jesus's words make it clear why we should pursue wisdom. Wisdom invites a closeness of relationship with God. It allows us not to do the smart thing, but the thing that God would have us do. And there's a difference. To live our lives in greater union with God, that's wisdom. That is what makes life worth living. And that's what we're trying to teach all these little people in our lives. I mean, we actually don't need to cram their little heads with loads and loads of Bible knowledge. I mean, it's handy, right? But that's not what brings people back. Day after day, week after week, year after year, what brings people back is knowing that there's relationship here. There's friendship here. There's family here. There are people who care. You know, I, I remember one time, my husband, we, we had liturgical dancers at our church in Florida, and they were three and four-year-olds, and the pastor's daughter had been in dance classes her whole life, and so she had this little after-school group that met, and once a quarter or so, these little four- and five-year-old girls, three-, four-, and five-year-old girls would put on little tutus and leotards, and they would dance to some contemporary Christian song that they'd been working at, you know, working on, and <laughs> one Sunday when they, Alan happened to be there and our kids were just babies and the senior pastor and I, they were up on the, up on the pulpit or on the, on the dais, just like we were. And they were so off center that when they ran this way, when they ran this way, each of us would move way back, trying not to get bombarded by these little girls. And they were off rhythm. They were off center. They were off beat. They were pretty terrible. And they were the most amazing thing any of us had ever seen in our lives. And when they were done with their little song and their little dance, the whole church jumped up and clapped for them and applauded and made them feel special. And I remember my husband and I were driving home that day and he looked at me and he goes, I want that for our children. I want that. I want our kids to be really awful at something and for everyone to think they're amazing because they're ours. You know, I've listened to really awful trumpet solos. I've listened to off-key saxophonists in church. And you know what? I never heard any of it. And it's not because I don't have a good ear for music, although it's partially that, but it's also because when it's one of our kids, when it's one of our young people, when it's one of our any age folks, they're ours, right? And they're showing their faith and they're sharing their love and we love them back. And that's the beginning of wisdom. That's the beginning of our need for God, our need for relationship and our need for community. And it begins right here, folks, with all of us. It begins when they're three and four, but if we are wise, we remember that it stays and it's present and that every age is valued. Every age has something to offer. And my hope and my prayer for all of us as we journey together is that we will find wisdom in our shared need for God and relationship. Amen. Friends, will you join me 
in a word of prayer. Amazing, wise God. There are times when we are so foolish, when we lose sight of the things that are most valuable in our lives, when we get distracted more than we should. And yet, God, always you bring us back. You bring us back to relationship. You bring us back to what is really important. You bring us back to community and caring for one another. And so, God, as we seek to model learning and this journey of faith for our young people today and every day, help us as followers of Jesus, always turn our hearts towards you. Always think about how you would have us be. Keep our hearts open to welcome wisdom in any way it comes to us, from a friend, from a stranger, from a child, from a neighbor, even, God, from an enemy. For your wisdom is all around us. And gracious God, be with our community as we begin our programs this week. Be with our children, our teachers, our confirmands, their prayer partners. Show us, God, as a community that every age is valuable. Help us, God, as we are inviting the most vulnerable groups back into our midst. Help us, God, to stay healthy, to follow protocol, to not only think about ourselves, but to think about others. And God, we pray for all of those in our country, in our world, who are struggling, who are sick, who are wanting to be back to normal. And yet, God, still we are struggling. And yet, God, show us all the ways we can be church now and always in our homes, in our communities, in our own lives. And now, God, hear our prayer as we share the prayer that Jesus himself taught us when he said, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. And now I switch gears once again. Uh, Pastor Katie Jo went home. Uh, she was here this morning and I sent her home because her beautiful little boy was so sick um, and his little ear was already red and fevered you could tell his ear infection was coming back and I said take that baby home he just looks so sad <laughs> um, but uh, so we also lift up him and uh, mom and dad because I know juggling two working parents and sick babies is no fun uh, but friends, as we think about how and what we offer to God today, we remember that the writer of Proverbs teaches that wisdom, God's wisdom is present and active in our lives in this way. She opens her hands to the poor and reaches out her hands to the needy. Jesus also lived this wisdom in his life and called his disciples to the same generosity let us give out of this same generous wisdom, a wisdom that seeks a presence and a purpose in our lives on behalf of all. And friends, if you wish to give to St. John UCC and its ministries, there are several ways to do so. Uh, there, are, there is an offering plate in the back of the church where you may leave your offering, but also you can mail in a check to the church. You can give through the St. John UCC website, or you can use the Give Plus app. And um, I have used it, and it is super easy. So um, don't think that it'll be too complicated. Friends, if you would rise, if you are able, and let us share in the doxology.
join me in a prayer. You are, you are the, the generous, generous one, one, full of mercy and, and goodness, goodness for your creation. Send your wisdom with these gifts that they may reach those who need your love and welcome. Bring about a harvest of goodness through these gifts so in peace. Amen. And now our time of announcements. Um, I have one. Um, our thank you all for volunteering, working, and contributing to the rummage sale, uh, which raised money for um, Evening Circle and shared uh, HHH, our HHH program. And I want to say it's 3,000 and change. Yeah, there you go. Miss Vicky's shaking her head. Um, so we had a really good, really good turnout. Um, it was apparently quite slow uh, in terms of shoppers and stuff. It wasn't the mad rush that it's been in past years, but overall, it was a great turnout. So thank you to all who volunteered for that. Um, the reason that I've been a basket case for an entire week is that my installation service is at 3 p.m. today. It's like our wedding, our wedding vows, you know? It's like having wedding jitters. I have no cold feet, but I am just beside myself with excitement. So that will take place at 3 p.m. today. Uh, in your email, there's also a Zoom link. So if you can't be here in person, you can uh, tune in on Zoom. Um, there is our uh, one of our COVID vaccination clinics um, in the parking lot on September 23rd, and um, you are able to uh, get your boosters uh, there as well if you're up for a booster shot. There's an informational congregational meeting next Sunday. Um, we're going to talk about uh, upgrading our AV stuff and uh, making it possible to do live streaming services. Um, so right now we have Zoom, which is live, but um, the service itself, if we were live streaming, you would, um, it would be a, a more widely um, available option and it would also probably have better sound and visuals if you're watching at home. Uh, so that's happening. Um, Extra Step is coming up on October 3rd because that's World Communion Sunday. Uh, Bible 101 is also coming for, um, I think it's uh, young Sunday school, elementary age kids. Uh, that's coming um, at 1015 on October 3rd. Uh, there's a fall festival at Camp Du Bois, a game night for youth, uh, October 3rd, 6 to 8 in the atrium. And if you are a young person and you can come, we're also going to be assembling treat bags for a later activity um, for like uh, to give out to, I think, Learning Tree and our um, a shared activity that we're going to do to celebrate Halloween later in the month. So um, we need your help. October 10th and 17th, there are new members classes and Verse Market is happening, yay, and it will be November 4th as drive through only. Um, so more information is coming and think about whether or not you can volunteer. I think I got everything. That's a long, that's a long thing. But uh, now let us share our closing song.
as you go out into the world today, go knowing that deep inside your heart, you have a yearning for your creator who made you, who loved you before you were even born. And that seeking your creator's presence in your life is the beginning of a wise and happy and blessed life. Go in peace and may the blessings of Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be with us all. Go now in peace and let all God's people say, Amen. Amen.